Many peoples have come to this land. Some to trade, some to terrorize, and some to live. figures 15 bandits at bridge grid reference figures 871930 intercept and destroy over Malaysia, 1960. The last communist terrorist had been killed. The 12-year emergency had ended. The Communist Party had signed its own death warrant by its senseless attack on the people. They had committed countless crimes against prosperity, thus uniting the people against them. The people could once again work their land without fear. But the fight against communism the fight against want and poverty, the fight to give every man the chance to live a decent life, was still to go on.
My name is Abu. Actually, I am a rice farmer, but I like to buy my own fish. Come, I'll show you the village. It is called Kuala Guru. Here I was born and grew up, and here I was married and in turn raised my own family. It was an ordinary village with people who lived the sort of lives thousands lived in similar villages throughout the new Malaysia. We were not a rich village. What we earned depended upon the moods of the sea and seasons. And it was not a good year if the rains washed the crops from the earth or prevented the boats from going to sea. But when the calm weather returned, there was little to disturb the routine of our village existence. The pattern of life would go on much the same as it had for centuries. A birth, perhaps. A death, perhaps. With a time for work. Time for play. And a time for love. like many others, was peopled by men and women of different races and different cultures. That was Chong Yam Poon. He owned some rubber trees on the other side of the village. Nice chap. A long time ago, some of my people settled here. They became part of the land and its people. The Malays say their land is beautiful, 
and we found the earth was good. So we worked in the tin mines, planted rubber, and traded in the towns and villages. Today, we are a third of the nation. All these slots will have to be cut down next year. Shame, really. But the new ones we'll plant will produce more rubber. They are developing new strains now with twice the yield. Life was hard in our own homeland. It was torn by civil war. Drought, floods and warlords caused famine and bloodshed in our great country. It told our fathers and grandfathers that here was a land of opportunity. Show! Congratulations! Thank you, Inspector. I've just had my first son. Many happy returns. Is there nothing he can keep his nose out of? He comes here once a week to inspect our police station, which takes him precisely nine minutes flat. The rest of the time, he listens to local gossip. That's what makes me a good policeman. You know, India was overcrowded. Work was hard to get. We too are told that in this land, we could find work and the chance to feed our family. Here was a new nation, born out of conflict, now united under one flag, but still divided on the eve of independence by race, language, and culture. It took four languages to say one thing. Pukul nam petang waktu Malaysia Barat. Inilah radio Malaysia dengan warta berita dari ibu negara Kuala Lumpur dibacakan oleh Hasbun Abdul Razak. Kelantan manila tilul la macang enam belas til. Marawal kata perta kai solil perli wanrai terendu wajar. Malaysia 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 Malaysia
and justice in that order and eventually became unfashionable. To their credit, they realized it themselves and retired gracefully. The period immediately following the war was one of lethargy. The country was calling for development. Money and energy which could have provided these things was poured into the emergency against the terrorists. Plantations and mines operated at a level far below their potential. There was a serious need for the establishment of industry and a recharging of the nation's economy. People felt frustrated. Due to the emergency, movement had been restricted and development delayed. The exultant hopes of the newly gained independence three years before remained unfulfilled. If this new nation was to survive and progress, it was necessary to introduce sweeping social, economic, agricultural and industrial reforms. Not only was a master five-year economic plan evolved, but also a dynamic rural development plan, the Red Book. Then the district officer came to see us. He had asked us, the village elders, to meet him. He explained to us what the red book he carried contained. The things the people of this village had been asking for were already marked and planned in the district officer's new tour. He told us later the book had been anything but a toy for him, just damned hard work. It was strange, this book of his, mysterious looking. But anyway, red is a lucky color in Chinese. And after a while, his explanations made the book seem a very good idea. He told us how there was a red book for every district in the country, and how each map had a page of tracing paper that fitted on top of it. On the tracing paper is marked every development scheme for each district. The district officer asked us to suggest even more improvements. Electricity, better water supply for our rice, a new well for drinking water, a footbridge, a school, all were discussed. But why, many of us asked, should anyone in the capital, so far away, be interested in a village like ours? But the reforms promised to the people of the village of Kuala Gurun had already happened and were happening to hundreds of such villages throughout the nation. The time had come to infuse a new spirit into the people and the planners, to encourage them to discuss and argue and settle problems on the spot. The time for red tape and trials was over. From the capital, the reconstruction of Malaysia was being directed with almost military precision. In the operations room, every element of town and village development is represented. Plans are turned directly into results. Reports from departmental supervisors are issued verbally, achieving in hours that which once took months. The Red Book Plan. Every district, every town, and every village is entered into the official Red Book. Plans for the development of roads, land, water supplies, schools, health centers, electricity, irrigation, and telecommunications. All are recorded, enabling an assessment of any area at any time. Simply, the Red Book is part of a systematic plan to coordinate all government agencies and authorities. It is an instrument of direct communication, harnessing the efforts of the government to the aspirations and needs of the people. The man most responsible for this revolution in planning and development 
for the task of stabilizing the country's economy and improving the lot of every man, woman, and child in the nation is the system's architect, Tun Abdul Razak, one of Malaysia's most dynamic leaders. I'm not happy about Kuala Gurun. I have heard from the member of parliament there some problems have arisen. I want to know where they are. Roads? We, we've had some problems, sir, but they have been recently settled. Water supply? Uh, my deputy director can answer this. The supply of equipment has taken longer than we planned for. Whose fault was it? There's a slight delay in the treasury. Sorry, sir. We admit this. I hope it will be cleared by Monday. Ah, good. I hope you report to me on Monday. That has been cleared. Come and see me at 12.15. And with the right answer. Excuse me, sir. There's a bit of foreign financing in this. The EPU are also involved. Has this been cleared with the World Bank? Yes, sir. We received a reply four days ago. Good. Let's now have a look. Throughout Malaysia, the Red Book plan was being implemented. with a problem, sir. What is it? We can't get ahead. Why? We have a landowner problem, sir. In spite of the compensation, the landowner concerned refuses to shift. The canal has been surveyed to go through her land, which means she must give up her house. She's so obstinate, does not understand what we are doing, and just will not budge. Has she been given an opportunity to apply for land and a house? Yes, sir. She's old, sir. It is difficult for her to understand. She says she has a family to support, another boy at the university. She says she's too old to try and begin a new life again. Why can't the district officer deal with this? He can, sir. As I said, she's old. She finds it difficult to understand. And the DO wants to be as human as he can. Time. Can you find her a house on one of your FDA scheme? I'm sure we can, sir. Good. I shall be going there on the 27th. Can you arrange my program so that I can meet her and if need be uh, visit her house? I think that's a good idea as you are going there anyway, sir. That should solve the problem. Helicopter, sir? I think so. On-the-spot investigations by the planning executives, including the Deputy Prime Minister, is one of the main 
galvanizing factors in achieving results. Does it reduce paperwork? But in addition, it speeds up work on the various projects, bringing planners and people into direct contact. We in the village had never expected a visit from the deputy prime minister of our country, but suddenly, here he was in Kuala Gurun. He told her there was a new home waiting for her, that she would be compensated for her land. Then he told her what they, the people and government of this new nation, were doing. How, working with one plan, as a single team, with one heart, they were building a new nation. How in a land that had known the sound of marching armies for almost a generation, there were new armies, building instead of destroying. Their foes were jungle, mountains, swamps, rivers, and traditions. Ambitions became reality, and plans moved into construction. Roads bring civilization to the eastern states of Sarawak and Sabah, designed to link the towns of Kuching and Jesselton. I now declare this road open. The Jenka Triangle, once primary jungle, now a resettlement area. Projected population, 100,000. Planned output, 128,000 tons of palm oil and 28,000 tons of rubber a year. The Muda Project, an irrigation scheme to harness the monsoon rains. Not one, but two valleys now connected to supply perennial water to 262,000 acres of coastland. Objective, to make Malaysia self-sufficient in rice production. New methods better the old. New strains of rice yield two crops a year. In the areas reclaimed from the jungle and the swamps, more industry emerges. More palm oil for export. Productivity is increased in the primary industries of tin and rubber. New deep sea harbors are constructed to handle the growing volume of trade. The changes are not confined to the rural areas. New schools are being built throughout the nation. Plans continue and the standards rise for this it's the new face of Malaysia. The new order not only gives the people a sense of purpose and dignity, but it liberates the dormant talents of an evolving culture, the expression of artists, painters, writers, designers, and architects can be felt throughout Malaysia. cities now experience a prosperity never known before. Tax concessions promote new industries. Foreign investment increases the national product. Factories are built in record time. The sounds of 
of progress can be heard across the nation. Malaysia, a nation based on law and order, now united under one flag. This is the story of present-day Malaysia that Tun Razak told the widow. A story of progress that the widow understood and accepted. Thank you. Today's prize giving is a great pleasure for me, for you children are the future citizens of our country. It is upon your shoulders to rest the hopes and aspirations for the future of the new Malaysia. You are the new Malaysia. Halima Binti Hashem. Rogaya Binti Zaina. <laughs> Zabeda Binti Zay. This is the new Malaysia a social and economic experiment destined for success.